What? Hey, he's he's just yelling. He's he called his doctor a criminal. He got banned for it. He's yelling about like literally seconds ago about how Kyle doesn't have a position. And then he asked him about another thing, like a really important thing. You call a an adult's doctor who can, both consented to a surgery a criminal. And now you're saying you're not sure if you'd ban it. Whatever happened to taking positions? Kyle Klinsky dropped a teaser for his discussion with Jordan Peterson. Now we've been covering Jordan Peterson a little bit. I don't like it, but you know what? It's it's definitely, you know, no matter what you think of him, he's definitely an interesting boy. I want to see what he has in store for us. He's gonna be touching on trans rights, Elliot Page, Donald Trump's record and all this sort of stuff, you know? Let's let's just let's just take a look. Uh let's go with the longer one first. So this one's going to be about um trains rights. Uh so I noticed just the other day you were banned from Twitter. Now, you know, I'm somebody nobody can argue against real. my lefty credentials. Everybody knows um, I'm a man of the left. Having said that, my my solution on this issue of social media censorship has always been Look, we need to expand First Amendment protections, and the way you do that is to regulate these big social media companies like their public utilities. So if you do that, then you, you know, basically you're saying this is the new public square and people can speak their mind here. Now, that doesn't mean, of course, you can't, you know, dox people or do direct threats of violence or anything like that. Anything that's actually illegal will remain illegal, but outside of that, you can't censor people just based on um, political opinion. So, you know, I definitely wouldn't have banned you, suspended you, etc. But I do have a question about that specific tweet. So here's one thing, okay? I think that these situations are different than ones that uh, I think that these situations are so fundamentally different this meme uh, when is very we're real. talking about like online discourse that we need to have uh, some moderation. The thing is, you can't have the have the government own like literally every every social media company as like so cool as it is. The better solution is just to regulate them. We don't want like the government to like own all of them because if if that's the case, then Republicans are going to do bad shit with them. And do you really think that the Republicans are going, if there was like a department of Twitter, okay, and like a Republican was in office, do you really think that the they would like moderate like death threats towards like minorities? Like, let, you know, let, let's be honest. And I'm not saying that like every single conservative would like be for that because they're absolutely not. But I'm just saying that like your average Republican like, do you really think that, like, they would, like, actually moderate against, like, near crimes, you know, doxing and shit like that? Do you really think so? Because I got to tell you, probably not. Like, Parler? Yeah, like, Parler. That's already been scooped up for, like, them, like, throwing around, like, you know, bad pictures of children. You know, if you if you know what I mean. I, I don't think so. And I think they would use that data in more worse ways than your average company would. I think so. Like we like companies are really bad. The power of the state for what they can do can be much worse for what happens with your like average daily life. I don't know. I just think this like it seems you can say basically everything that you want without like there are lots of people who are who say basically the same thing that Jordan Peterson did about Elliot Page every single day, but they don't say it in ways that's TOS. You can still say what you want, just not TOS typically. Like you, you can get your point across. You just have to be better at using words, right? And if you can't do that, that sounds more like a personal problem than like Twitter's problem, really. At the end of the day, as bad as companies are, and I'm a, I'm a socialist, okay? I don't really like companies much. They're beholden to some things, and market forces are one of those things. I think, honestly, Facebook and Twitter being like owned by private companies and needing to rely on public approval and also ads for their company is an amazing great thing that's that's been a good thing in one sense in one sense in particular when it comes to having a decent tos nobody wants to give their money in this environment to a site that allows people to say crazy shit about people right you you just don't Having like a good TOS is better. It's like sidewalks in the road, okay? I think that we have more freedom when cars aren't allowed to drive on the sidewalk and like just just mow us down while we're on the, while we're like 
you know, vibing at the corner store because they want to get to work faster. So they'll just take the side of the uh, the side of the you know sidewalk. I think that's a ridiculous thing. And that's basically the equivalent of what like. Jordan Peterson is doing. Rules are important and rules can bring more freedom. We cities work better when cars can't drive on the sidewalk and these apps work better when people can't like promote harassment. That's how it works. That did get you in trouble because, you know, you said something to the effect of, um, well, I don't know if it got me in trouble. You know, I don't think I'm in trouble. Twitter banned me, but I don't consider well, that trouble. That's <laughs> fair enough. Fair point. Um, but you said something to the effect of remember when pride was a sin and, um, mm -hmm. Uh, the criminal physician. And Ellen Page just had her breasts cut off by a criminal physician. Criminal physician, exactly. So my question is, his, he had his boy breasts cut off. That's true. He's still coping. Do you think that when people get like breast surgery, can you like keep the breast tissue like afterwards? Can you like tell them to put it in a bag for you or something like you can do with a wisdom tooth after you get like a tooth removal? You think you can do that? You think that'd be possible? Maybe he had a crush on Elliot Page. Yeah, let's do the conservative thing is when you disagree with someone, it's not because you disagree with them. It's because like you want to have sex with them. I think that uh, Jordan Peterson said all this stuff about Elliot Page because he wants to have sex with Elliot Page. I don't t think titties work like that. I think you could. I think you could. I think honestly, it should be illegal that if you ask for like your body part back that the doctors take away from you that uh, that they can't give it back to you unless it's something like super toxic. Like a, like you having a cytotoxic megacolon or something. The flesh wouldn't, um, would the flesh not rot? Just put it in the freezer. Is the physician really criminal? If you agree that adults can decide to transition, then why would the physician be criminal? Don't adults have that right if they want to transition? <laughs> Is he okay? Not everything legal isn't criminal. <laughs> okay. Wait, is he on like, wait, is he on that big of a delay or was, or is he crying or something? Is he all right? I don't know. I, I, I can't tell if it's like a, like a five second delay or, or he just heard that question. And he's like, fuck, now I have to like explain this. Not everything legal isn't criminal. Not everything legal isn't criminal. And do they have that right? See, I would have left Ellen Page alone if she hadn't been parading her new abs in a fashion magazine. Uh, you could just you could just not look at his apps, buddy. You you don't you like you don't have to. Yeah. Th so why like why is it cr so you don't mean l literally criminal? When he means criminal, he doesn't mean like you're actually in trouble. He means criminal as in I don't like what you do. Yeah. Just quit looking at magazines. How many kids do you think she can convince to convert? A one? Yeah. Thousand? No, not See, yeah. I, no, no. Really? I want to convert. Convert to what? Is 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 is. is is, is Elliot Page, is, is he like into Scientology or something? He means degeneracy. I think it just means convert into like being a human being that I like don't like because I'm, I stick my nose where it doesn't belong. Transgenderism. It's my new religion. So like, have, have, have you guys played like Call to the Lamb? You know how you can like, you play the demo for Call to the Lamb, how you can get like your little like a uh, squadron and your little cult. That's basically Queen of the Trans. Uh, contra points in her like group of uh, trans women and uh, she she recruits them into being a, a transgender I want to respond to that yeah. I think that with the trans community it's Holy very similar crap, to the gay seething. community where back when that first became a big issue people thought oh if we talk about it if it's in magazines or whatever we're promoting kids to go down that path but really what happened is people are who they are that, and if they're gay they just decided to be you like know, yeah i'm gay and they were just more open and honest with themselves so i don't think you're promoting people to do that no, that's you're just not saying, what happened if you you're are that it's okay wrong. okay well you're I'm, utterly I'm, I'm wrong listening. there's I'm nothing listening. about that that's right so I explain well, there's been an absolute look one of the reasons that I holy crap he's is is he's turning red oh my gosh he's become he's turning into a lobster before our very eyes he is so mad. I've never seen him like actually this mad. Why every time he's mad, he he's on like the verge of crying. Yeah, guys, do you have your uh, first sight chat? You got the, the tantrum emote? You got your tantrum emote? Y you guys are going to need it. You guys going to need your tantrum this emote for this one because he's. <sighs> I opposed Bill C-16 in Canada to begin with, this pronoun compelled speech bill. It was because I knew perfectly well what was going to happen when we introduced confusion about gender identity into the public sphere. Now, the argument was that if we left 
people with gender dysphoria alone to make their own way and stop torturing them, that we would decrease the mental health load on those individuals. And my analysis as a clinician was that for every one person of that sort that we hypothetically saved, we doom a thousand more. As so basically what he's saying is that we have to, we have to torture trans people because their lives are worse. They're really a clinician. So he did actually work as a licensed therapist. He did actually have, well, actually, no, he's not a clinician. He worked as a licensed therapist. He had like, he had like uh, customers, he had patients, right? Um, but he wasn't a researcher simply because, simply because like you're a therapist does not mean you're a researcher. He 100% just slipped that conversion therapy is, uh, is indeed torture. I think, I think he's, I think it's one of those things where he's like, yeah, it's painful. Yeah, it's torture, but we need to torture them or else worse things are going to happen. As a consequence of confusion and then social contagion. I knew the literature on psychogenic epidemics. They used to call that mass hysteria. And it's a literature that goes back about 300 years. It, so just because it goes back a, a long way does not mean it's real. This in the sense of like trans people and a lot of like social phenomena is just not it's it's not real. So basically what it's saying is like something happens and groups of people all like become insane together. Like so it's like a contagion because he thinks that ideas that he doesn't like are like diseases that must be like eradicated, really. Like it's like hysteria. I mean, they made the the reason why dildos were made is because like they said that women had hysteria, so they just needed to like um so the reason why they were doing drugs and being sad was not because they were forced to be like a, a baby compactor and like forced to be at home and don't have like a real life for themselves. It's because they just need to come harder. And so we'll just like quickly make them come a couple times and like it, they'll just fix them. Listen, leeches, they go back hundreds of years. And whenever you introduce, often when you introduce social confusion, you can produce a psychogenic epidemic, especially among generally it's adolescent females who are most susceptible to it. So I thought, oh, well, what's going to happen is we'll produce a psychogenic epidemic of gender dysphoria among adolescent females. And that is exactly what's happened. And it isn't the fact that we've freed up people who are, what, in doubt about their identity to be who they are. That may have happened in a tiny minority of cases. It's absolutely and definitely the case that we've doomed thousands of kids to brutal, mutilating surgery and premature sterility. And we've done that on the altar of our hypothetical moral virtue and compassion. So here's the thing i'm gonna need some i'm gonna need some evidence for that partner i'm gonna need some evidence for like any of this literally any of this so basically he's saying that everyone has gone crazy all at once and that we're like pushing people to be like trans and that's confusing people to think that like they are actually trans when they're not and so basically he's saying that in the future or like now we're experiencing they're going to experience like a huge like detransitioning uh like pipeline or whatever that's going to lead people to uh, cutting off their peepees and vagoobers and like slicing and dicing their boobies, uh, leading to less booby and um, and uh, young females are the ones who's getting caught up into it, even though even though there are less trans men than there are trans women out there. But I guess we're not going to, you know, we're not going to talk about that, I guess. Here, one moment. Sorry, I'm doing a little I'm doing a little looky transgender issues let's see an incomplete list of reputable scientific and social organizations which affirm the validity of transgender people that transness is not a, an illness and that trans people deserve respect and equal rights etc this also serves as a list of institutions that recognize the difference between sex and gender american psychological association the american medical association american uh, psychoanalytic association the human rights campaign american uh, academy of pediatrics American College of Osteopathic Pedi uh, Pediatricians, the United Nations, United Kingdom's National Health Service. Incomplete list. But those are just some off the face. These are the people that Mr. Jordan Peterson is, has to go up against when he says that they're wrong. Now, what research is he pulling up to that, that they're wrong? I don't know. I haven't seen any research from Republicans or conservatives that say that this is in that that this is incorrect they just say that it is because they don't like it and it's okay if you don't like it i would implore you to learn a little bit more but they don't care about learning they care about just talking 
Take a look at this. 2008 Gender Identity Resolution, the American Psychological Association, which expands upon the premises listed and annotated above that supports total uh, equality for trans peoples. There's a very interesting thing here that I always bring up, right? Which is this. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. And so this is a study. This is a meta study of many studies. It's 56 studies. So a meta study is a study that studies studies, right? I hope you're keeping up. So this is a study that went over 56 studies on trans people, okay? And what they found is that almost every single one of them said that it's pos that transitioning and gender affirming care, whether that be social and or medical, is good for trans people. Oh, 50, 55? Oh, yeah, my bad. It says 55, not 56. Uh, more lefty misinformation. 55, 55 instead of 56. Anyways, 93% found that gender transition improves the overall well-being of transgender people. Seven found mixed or nothing, and none were negative. Literally zero were negative. Literally none. So, I have 51 studies that say that being trans is good. What does peterson have to say that it's not i don't know some some crack pipes and the fact that he just doesn't like a a certain trans man who uh, shows his mad abs look i read a cor corporate analysis of the trans surgery industry last week growth rate projection for you lefty types and your anti-corporatism growth rate projection 15 percent per year invest now a 350 million dollar business as of 2022 Projected to expand to 750 million by 2027. Yeah, but that's how capitalism works. Do you, does he think that the doctors are making trans people? Does he think that like capitalism's like, bro, we need more trans people. Quickly, let's expand trans surgeries. Whoop. And then tr people go, oh man, there's more trans surgeries available. Awesome. Just, and then I'm trans now. Like, is that how that works? No moral hazard there. There's so plenty of moral hazard what, there. What and that surgery is absolutely brutal. So what percentage of the population do you think, uh, in your conception of how this is unfolding, what percentage of the population do you think is going to end up being trans at the end of this? Do you think like oh, one day it's going to be like 70% of the we know country's already. trans? All of them. Cis people will be shiny Pokemon. Well, we know already that about one in five adolescents now identifies, to use that hated word, identifies as part of the hypothetical LGBTQ plus community. So it's one in five. I don't know what the upper limit is. There's a consulting group in the UK now that's claiming there's 150 different genders. There's actually, Pug. I suppose, 7 billion different genders if you want to get technical about it. So true, true. Like I said, 7 billion genders and every time a conservative complains about it, trans people add five more. You guys complained about it so much. You went from, you went from like 88 to 7 billion. Quit complaining. But if you guys keep complaining, they're gonna we're gonna beat up to 14 billion genders. Come on, man, that's hard to keep track of. Because everybody's temperament differs. But I don't know what the upper limit is, and I have no idea what the upper doesn't limit it, is for this surgical intervention. We'll see. Doesn't but that, I don't find it I, I don't find it the least bit acceptable. And if you think that your compassion is demanding that you extend your uh, pity to the LGBTQ plus community at the cost of sterilizing children, you should think again. You're on the wrong side of this, and not Wait, in a trivial on. way. Don't uh, I? I would appreciate if you don't ascribe beliefs to me that I don't have. Remember my original question. He's like, this he's so mad. Real. He started to like, he's just like throwing things at Kyle. Kyle's barely been able, uh, even able to respond. He's just like, I don't know. He's just like, he brought up like a a point. I don't know. Has Jordan Peterson not been in a in, in an interview with somebody who doesn't almost completely agree with what he's saying for so long? He forgot what it's like to be proposed with questions that he disagrees with. <laughs> well, about, you said earlier in well, the question that, I said that you Elliot were, Page is an adult, and so do you think that he has the right to yeah, transition? But the, that was the original question. You made question. some comments after that. Yeah, but as a star mm -hmm. and a public figure and a model for emulation, mm -hmm. she also has the responsibility not to entice confused adolescents into a catastrophic decision before they have the maturity to make that decision. Entice? Hello? Here's the thing. Nobody is being converted into being trans. You don't get converted into being trans. Your brain either is trans or it's not. Sorry. That's like how it works. The structures of your, you can't just 
turn someone trans. Okay, just so you know, if you can, and I've had to bring this up before. If you think that you can turn someone trans, that means that you can turn someone cis. Okay? And if, and so think about it. These, when it comes to people's brains, they don't work in just one direction. They're not like, they're not like um, one way streets. It doesn't work that way. If he's saying that conversion therapy is good because we need to get people out of this, if you can take somebody from being trans and turn them into not trans, then you can take somebody who's not trans and turn them trans. So basically everybody who admits, everyone who admits or like likes to say that conversion therapy is going to reduce the number of trans people, well, that means that you can be talked into being a woman. Can, can you do that? I personally, as a cis guy, thinking about it, no, I cannot be talked into being a woman. I don't want to fucking be a woman. I very much love being a guy. I love it. I think it's great. You can't do this. Just like that. And they like to bring up that old um, research from like long, long ago where they where the kid had like a botched circumcision. So they just like removed the dick and tried to raise him as like a girl. That proves that you can't force people, even the most drastic steps, you can't force people to be something they're not. You can't force somebody to be something they're not. And that doesn't mean you can't, you can force somebody who's trans to be cis. You can't force somebody who's cis to be trans. It doesn't work that way. Bear a doof. And Argo, you can cut this. Thank you so much for the $5. I'm not sure if I ever like shouted you out, but thank you so much. Anything you recommend for climate anxiety? I'm getting better at dealing uh, with it, but I still have a hard time sometimes. Stop looking at like a bunch of people who say that like we're fucked, it's over. Stop looking at those people, like completely ignore them and work on making the change that you can for your environment. It's way easier to have like hope for like a better world when you're actually taking the time out of your day to not doom scroll Twitter and actually be out on the street or be out at your like city council, or be campaigning for a candidate that cares about climate change, to be talking to your uh, people in your like local community about like the importance of climate change. It's way easier to not like sit in your bed crying and rocking back and forth because you think that snow won't exist in like three years. It, it, it's way harder to like do that when you're actually out like making the world a better place. That's that's what I say. I just have to say, Jordan, I think it's a little bit of a moral panic. I just don't see some sort of, uh, you know, frenzy. Of okay, what would you consider? Become trans? What, first of all, that's a hell of a way to put it. What? Is, Why don't you that... take a look at the increase in, in surgical interventions and see what you think? I mean, how many do you think well, is too many? Again, many? I don't. This is an insane question. He's like, I don't think that I don't know what the upper limit is, but his. But his upper limit, he ha, he does know what the upper limit is. Well, he what he wants it to be. He wants the upper limit to be zero. So anything above zero is horrible to him. I don't think much about uh, there being more more cases this is like asking how many how many uh, 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 chemotherapy treatments is too much well none well i guess the only time when chemotherapy becomes like too much is when we're just giving away chemotherapy to just like anybody for whatever reason uh no matter what but the thing is that doesn't happen with like trans issues it just doesn't it just doesn't people aren't going into like breast removal surgeries in like massive droves and like Reg regretting it or something this just doesn't happen it doesn't happen that's true it's like how many piercings are too many i don't know how many um how many colonoscopies are too many i don't know the right number is the amount that we need and if people are going to these doctors for these procedures it seems like there's they're needed these, wait, look the, if we're talking about i'll, I'll answer your question i'll answer your question the argument is it it used to be very repressed because that's very outside of the tradition and the norm and the standard. And that now we what sort of let the boot be, off the neck a little bit. Suppressed? What used to be suppressed? All, exactly. The entire LGBTQ community. I mean, it was very recently we okay, even got all, gay marriage in the a, United States. First of all, they're not a community. Well, you understand what is the point this community? I'm no, I'm, no, actually, neither I understand it nor you. And that's why we're delving into it. <laughs> first of all, they're not a community. So true. The, the, I like this guy, this Dr. Peterson guy. He's got a point. Queer people are not a community. Have you seen them on Twitter? Have you seen? Have you seen queer discourse on Twitter? They're not a community. You're right. They're a family. And that's why they bicker like that. Okay? Have you seen gay people club each other's heads in? 
Have you seen the type of memes that they post? Have you seen that meme where it's like a hand that's holding a spray bottle? Uh, <laughs> okay. And like, and, and they're like squirting at a cat to get the fuck out of here. And the cat has a G on it. And like, get the, get the, get the hell out of here. White gays. And they're spraying them away. Be gone. You know? <laughs> and, and the hand has LBT on it. Like, my goodness. Like how many how many times I've seen gay people uh, be like, yes, I'm gay. Yes, I'm homophobic. We exist. Like, come on. They're crazy out there. They're crazy out there. That's just a catchphrase. It's a buzzword. And I'll tell you something else that almost all the kids who are undergoing. Ah, just so you know, if you don't if you don't know, if you don't have like the answer for this, for why it's called a community, it's called a community for one specific reason, because they all share similar struggles as well as um, a, a similar place in society in the sense of they are marginalized because of their identity, whether that be their ace or gay or trans or queer of some flavor. That's why they're in, they're called that community it's not community as in they all go to the homosexual like council to vote on um who's going to make the the next tweet about gay people um this week that's not that's not what happens yes yeah, like black community right they're called communities because they share a similar like amount of like um oppression in society they share like similar like people coming after them if you don't like one one flavor of queer people you probably don't like all the rest of them right there's so few there's such a small amount of people who are like yeah gay people are okay but trans people mm. you know there's so few people who are actually unironically like that so so few there may be some who say that they are but some who actually are are so so far few and far between almost completely non-existent they're called a community for like uh, the place that they're for their place in society, not for them actually like hosting homo gay house parties. Going surgical intervention. The clinical literature is absolutely clear on this. 80% of kids with gender dysphoria identify as homosexual when they mature. 80%. And that means the vast majority of people who are being converted. You can be gay and trans. Being gay does not mean that you're not trans some trans people are gay this has literally nothing to do with the same does he think that being homosexual is it does he think that you can't be gay and trans at the same time it's like one or the other does he think that being gay and trans are like as op as like opposite as being cis and in trans does he think that you can only be one letter or the other pick one Yo, you know what? On, on, do I have any like bi? Do I have any bi or, or gay like trans people in chat? I have any like I have any like homo gays, uh, homo gay trans peoples vibing around. Yes, hello. Bi and ace, hello. I'm pan and trans, hello. Wow, uh, you guys, you bitches don't exist. That's crazy. Demi bi, non-binary. I have no clue what the fuck that shit means, but I'm happy for you. This is from the Ray Blanchard study. Who should not be taken seriously since he's a total quack ray blanchard i feel like i've heard this name before he feels like that guy who made studies on queer people but all of but he was like a christian he was like a he was like a pastor and, and also all of his studies have been like completely they failed peer review and completely uh were, were torn apart oh he's from canada another thing wrong with him Ray Blanchard is an, is an American Canadian sexologist, best known for his research and studies on transsexualism, pedophilia, and sexual orientation. Um, oh, research interests. You see this? You see this word right here? You see that word? You see this? Research interests. This, this little, this little bugger right here. Yeah, he coined it. Yeah. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is the guy. So like, this word it basically means it's it's basically the conservatives best explanation for why trans women exist specifically trans women exist because trans men aren't real apparently he he bep he he hebophilia what the fuck is a hebophilia uh what, what the fuck is a hebophilia that's just pedo shit oh is that like the is that like uh you're a pedo but you don't want to say that you're a pedo ah okay Honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought it said herbophile. I'm like, what? 
He's an herbophile. He likes herbs. Anyways, AGP is like, I think it's the acronym. Uh, basically what it what it means it's like the conservative explanation for why trans women exist basically what they're saying is that like men uh love love the idea of women so much that they just it's they're they're saying that trans women don't exist it's just men that love women so much that they just become one <laughs> you you just are a you just become woman now because you think woman pretty so you just become one basically it's a it's a completely ridiculous um it, it, it's a completely ridiculous meme honestly women do be pretty yes and that's simpler than just trans people existing yes apparently thinking that being trans is some sort of deep fake long con role play about you just liking women so much that you just wanted you want to have sex with women so much you just want to you just become one is apparently more reasonable to these people than just saying that they exist it's wild it's a it's a it's a wild meme let me tell you it's a wild meme uh but yeah that's the that's the guy who he's uh, referencing surgically are gay now how is that an advantage to the gay community wait, 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 wait. are gay is the vast majority of people who are being converted surgically are gay also what does he consider gay can i like can we can we talk about that for a moment what do they mean gay do they mean gay from their like birth yeah surgically gay <laughs> people who are converted surgically converted so people who transition who go through surgical transition gender affirming surgery uh he says that they're gay so what does what does i don't trust this guy so what does he mean gay does he mean gay as in from their birth gender to uh to what uh, to the type of person they're attracted to or do you mean gay in the sense of you're a, you're a trans man and you're attracted to men is it gay as in like you're a female who converted to be who converted? What the fuck? Who a, tr a female who has been converted by the gender ideology to to hate boopy. You were born as a female and you transitioned to be a guy and you like women. Does that mean you're gay? I don't know. If you paint your fingernails, whoa, 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 hey, hey, chill. I wanted to be gay, so I got a queer lobotomy. Ah, uh, so true. Gen Gengar ideology, trans Gengar. Now, how is that an advantage to the gay community, precisely? No, see, I'm not, I'm not taking a position in any way, shape, or form on the kids, because I don't know the- And also, why does this- who the fuck cares about, like, if other people's identity is good for gay people? Who cares? I, I don't care. What? what? I don't care if there's one or two billion. I don't care if there's one singular gay person or two billion gay people. It, it does. It does not matter. <laughs> like, it, I'm, I'm sorry. Other people's identity is is not like a toy for you to play around with. Like you. So that seems so selfish. Oh, I can't fuck them because they're not gay anymore. They transitioned. Yikes. Are you sure about this to comment on the kids? Well, but see, that's why we're having this conversation, though, is because my original question was about kids, the adults, interview works. and what your take is on the adults. Mm -hmm. And it sounds to me like, let me ask you this, would you ban transition surgery for adults? I don't know. What? Hey, he's, he's just yelling? He's, he called his doctor a criminal? He got banned for it. He's yelling about, like, literally seconds ago about how Kyle doesn't have a position. And then he asked him about another thing, like a really important thing. You call a, an adult's doctor who can, both consented to a surgery a criminal, and now you're saying you're not sure if you'd ban it? Whatever happened to taking positions? Whatever happened to taking positions? He was he was about to like reach through the camera and like wring Kyle's neck for it not having a position, even though he's supposed to have like a balanced uh, interview where he just asks him questions uh, from people who disagree with him. Gone, his brain gone, reduced the atoms. Like, didn't he just yell at Kyle a second ago? Well, but see, that's why we're having this case because in in any way, shape, or form on the kids because. I don't know the well, first thing about this to comment on. See, he's like, you should have a position. Like like, well, but see that and what your surgery for adults. I don't know. Really? Yeah, really. We're paying a big price for it. And I well, think that I think that it was um Kyle, I I feel like Kyle's trying not this to This meme laugh. is very real.
I feel like Kyle is trying really hard not to laugh. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, he's, he's, it's, it's coming off as Kyle's like, if I laugh at this guy, he's going to end the call and I'm not going to be able to get my money. It's going to be a waste of time. He's like, I can't, I can't laugh at him. Don't laugh. It was an, an act of stunning hubris to conduct the first trans surgery procedure. But, and it's not obvious to me at all that it's been a net social good. And but so, aren't there some people that are obviously trans who were born in one body, they feel like they're in the other body, and when they're an adult, they can make the decision. And then even from just a freedom and liberty perspective, shouldn't they have that right? Even if they do it and then they regret it, shouldn't they have the right to try it? It's a good question. I mean, it's a tricky one, right? Because there's also- How? How? How's that a tricky one? Adult, it's, hello? This guy's the conserv. this guy's the freedom leader? A tricky question. And a, an adult consents to do something with their body that you disagree with. Should they, should you ban it? I don't know, tricky question. How? Sorts of surgical enhancement procedures that are obviously, it's not this obviously very real. to make them illegal. And I don't know exactly where the cutoff line is, so to speak, and that's partly why we're having a public discussion about it. But uh, this, this, this entire argument, I'm pretty sure I know where the cutoff line was. I think it's like right. I think it's like in near the bottom of the rib cage and right under and directly under the breast. In many ways, is stated so idiotically that it almost defies description. I mean, what do you mean? Feel like you're in the wrong body? Well, what kind of measurement is that? No, hang on a sec. I was going to. There are It's psychology. What does? Isn't he like a psychologist? What do you What do you mean? I don't know. Like, how do you? feel like you can't get how do you feel like you have executive dysfunction well i can't get my stuff done and it's affecting my life like do you guys know the, do you guys know what the um uh what, what the like cutoff for what's something that's like a personality issue and what's like a mental issue is do you know what that cutoff is for when you start to have when you're diagnosed with like having a problem do you know what that cutoff is it's not some sort of you you're like we like we've been able to download your mind and you scored a an 82 on the autism scale so you have autism stinky like do you know how it works anybody please tell me what do you mean you want to kill yourself yeah do, do, have you measured that uh yeah oh you say you want to kill yourself uh, uh do you have a study for that like shut up loser <laughs> the the criteria for when you have like a condition or something is when it starts to affect your your life negatively. It's affecting my life. Yes, thank you, Ash, 100%. When it starts to get in the way of what you want to do, when it starts to affect your life. And I think wanting to change your gender so much that you're going to the doctor is like, that seems like it's enough to want to change your life. Is it not? Is it not? And it's not, it's not even like something that happens, you know, a little every once in a while. It's something that's a prolonged, long series of affecting your life typically in a negative way when you get a diagnosed with something. And so, yes, I feel like this is indeed a measurement. Hello? Have we ever seen the, like, wait, have you ever seen this, Mr. Doctor? Have you ever seen this, Mr. Doctor? Ah, boo! Look, it's scaring Jordan. He's scared. He's scared. He's looking at a, uh, he's looking at a, uh, <laughs> he's looking at an arbitrary measurement of how people feel. I can't, I don't know, I don't know how to tell you. How do you know what's, how do you, where's moderate, where's mild to moderate? What's the difference between moderate to severe? What's severe and very severe? I don't, I don't know. What if I just have a low threshold? So like my threshold would, it would be like a moderate, but it's actually like a, like a really low mid. No subjectivity. How in the world are you going to have like a crazy objectivity and like psychology? Some things that you can measure like brain waves and stuff like that. But when it comes to how you feel on the inside, if you're like, I can't get my work done, I can't concentrate. That's the only like thing that you need to be like, oh yeah, you probably have ADHD. Really? Honestly, obviously it's a little bit more steps than that, but like, that's the base thing. It's, it's ridiculous. Rules <laughs> for these sorts of diagnostic decisions. Mm -hmm. Okay. The rule is that you have to make a valid and reliable diagnosis. That's if you're diagnosing depression or anxiety or obsessive compulsive disorder or cancer or anything like that. There are standards that you have to abide. Uh, mental issues, cancer, uh, mental issues, anxiety, OCD, cancer. In order to make a diagnosis, in order to fulfill the obligations of your professional college. If someone comes to you and says, I feel like I have lung cancer, that is not sufficient grounds upon which to formulate a diagnosis, much less proceed to surgery. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, what do you mean is is there a, is there a trans bone 
can you remove the trans bone? Hello? Is there like a, is it like the appendix? Is there like a little trans organ in there? Like a little wiggly boy that you can remove? Can you give a trans person a laxative and they'll shit the trans out? What do I feel? What is that? Is that an emotion? Is it a well, motivation? Is it a feeling? I'm really glad this guy doesn't have patience anymore. So, so conclusion? What is so, it? Let me, let, me explain, let me explain to you what I mean. Let me explain to you what I mean. So I've been doing my show for about a decade. And about mm -hmm. two or three years into doing my show, there were, you know, some stories here and there that I covered about the trans issue. Somebody who is trans reached out to me and explained to me in a very straightforward way. Yeah, look, I was born biologically female. I feel like I'm biologically male. My reality what does never that mean? lined up. Well, me, I'm just explaining what they said, and then you can respond however you'd like to respond. And they told me as soon as it. I got the surgery, changed the way I dressed, changed the way I appeared, I felt phenomenally better. And so that's why, at least for me, this was the answer. Now, I think it would be incredibly arrogant for me to say back to that person, no, you shouldn't do that, or I know better than you do for yourself. Now, that's not to say that every time somebody does this, it works out well, of course, because everybody's an individual. But in some instances, that's the answer. So, you know, me as a simple outsider, I just look at it and say, hey, whatever floats your boat, and if it works, it works. Look, most of the time, my attitude is you can go to hell in handbasket any way you choose if you're an adult. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem, this problem is complicated and compounded by the fact of the necessity of medical involvement and the ethics on the medical front. So when you asked me about how that should be regulated, my answer was I'm not exactly sure about that. Yep, Although it isn't obvious to me. His face is so red. Oh, he's, he's Malden. He's mad. That the, that it's obvious to me that the trans surgery enterprise has gone way too far, way too far. Thousands of people too far. And I'm certain that it's harmed exponentially more people than it's helped. Research? Data? Anything to base that upon besides like things that you've read on Twitter? Nope. I just feel like it's hurt more people than it's helped. Do I know? No. Do I have a study for that? No. Did like any like doctors who spend their time on this, you know, tell me this? No. Just, I just think it's hurt more people. He, he feels that way. Uh, Jordan, um, can, do you have like, what, what sort of metric is that? I, you feel like it's hurt more people? Uh, we can't, that's not a real metric. Come on. Get, get a grip, buddy. All right, guys, what you just saw. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh man, K Klinsky jump scare. Good Lord. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Klinsky. I appreciate you. All right. Um, now, now for the next one, I guess there's another one uh, where he's pressed on Trump's record. Now, good Lord. Why does he look like that? Hole. <laughs> Kyle, what is this? Did he, did he bump up the contrast on Jordan? Oh, he looks like goddamn Larry the Tomato. What's going on? Pink Tiny Hulk. He looks he looks horrible. He looks like he's going to die. He looks already dead. <laughs> Goodness, holy Lobster King, Lobster King. All hail the Lobster King. If you were an American citizen, you were here in the 2020 election, would you have voted for Trump, Biden, nobody, or a third party candidate? I don't know. You know, you do, it's very hard to answer those questions until you're actually in the situation. When Clinton was facing off against Trump, for a very long time, I felt that I would have voted for Clinton. I felt that she had the, at least the administrative background and the governmental experience to know what the job was and to handle it. I felt that Trump was a wild card, which he most definitely was. Then I went to this... <laughs> Can you can you imagine how crazy it would be if he was like, I'd vote Bernie. <laughs> the night of the election, I went to this Republican gala in Canada at a private club uh, watching the election, and they did a straw vote there. And I think he's lying. In the straw vote, I bit. cast my vote for Trump. And that surprised me. And it was something I sort of switched on last minute. And the reason I switched, I would say, is because I thought Clinton betrayed the working class. In fact, that's why she lost the election. It isn't something I just felt. That's definitely. Clinton betrayed the working class billionaire who uses his wealth to force them at the threat of starvation and homelessness to extract surplus uh, value off of the labor that they create for him as he spends money in uh, child sweatshops uh, for child slavery for his 
uh, company brands and uses his money to gentrify New York and Florida, uh, raising housing prices and kicking poor communities out of their generational homes and communities to be adrift in the American sea of lava that is the housing market and job market did not betray the working class i guess he's a he's a yeah he's like a he's like a cool he's a cool guy he's a cool guy yeah yeah clinton betrayed the working class but like that's that's not why he doesn't like trump what happened as far as i know so he i could, thought to he help with wrong, you, I guess. you know i'd rather have this wild card in here with his spontaneous lies than have you in here with your programmatic powered mad driven uh pre-authorized lies i like it when he says wild lies and i'm not sure what he'll say i don't like it when i know exactly what they'll lie about because like predictability is cringe dude what? yeah like he doesn't think that trump really betrayed the working class he's just a weirdo so i don't know it's hard to tell what you do in a situation until you're actually in it do you think trump as president in his four years also betrayed the working class um, not in the same manner. No, really. I think Trump how? did some things that were really quite spectacular. How uh, like one what? of them? Like what? Well, how about no war? Well, he did assassinate a top Iranian commander. No, 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 no. Vice... <laughs> <laughs> well, he tried to start a war by uh bombing by assassinating you know Iranian commanders and then like taking away our ability to check like whether or not he they they're go after we try after we make a direct threat towards their government uh that they're like not we took away our, our ability to check if they're not making you know nuclear bombs to you know flatten all of the east coast but um you know and Iran saber rattling back you know that's you know Except, except for assassinating a top government official of a foreign nation, Trump did a pretty good job. I, I didn't say ground. say that. About, I didn't say anything about assassination. I said something very specific. Yeah. You, I would say Trump that's an act of not, war. No, it's not an act of war. It's an assass assassinating. Assassinating a top government official is not an act of war. Does he think that? Wait a second. Does he think? If if China, if Xi Jinping signed an order to assassinate the president of the United States, he doesn't think that's an act of war? Really? That is a war crime. What? We're not even at war with Iran. What? <laughs> World War I started with an assassination. <laughs> Dog, I'm losing it. Who is this? People look up to this guy? Assassination. An act to of kill war an Iranian commander? I don't understand the point you're making. Well, I'm trying to say if in Iran, if the Iranians killed one of our generals, we would call that an act of war. We do it to them and it's not an act of war. All right, then I guess we have to differentiate between an act of war and a war. <laughs> well, listen, I like Trump better because even though Trump really tried hard to start World War III, he failed because he's stupid. But I don't like Biden because when he got into office a conflict all the way across on the opposite side of the planet sparked while he was president that's why i'm very smart what you have right now with russia that's a war and yeah, trump did not engage, engage the u.s in a war of that sort and so that was a signal contribution he also was also this is wrong we've been we've been funding Lila, I, Kyle's gonna, I don't think Kyle, I don't think Kyle's gonna like this very much. I know Kyle is very, he keeps up a lot with uh, wars around the world, like Somalia, Yemen, Israel, <laughs> buddy, buddy, Taiwan, it, it, even honestly, like the, uh, between the UK and Ireland, like you, you all right, buddy, Kashmir, you know, like uh, the, 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 the land dispute between like India and Pakistan, where we're, we have our hands in literally all of that. Like, like what are you talking about? Czech, Czechia? Czechia? Korea? <laughs> okay, then. Whatever, I guess. Well, whatever, I guess. Established the Abrahamic Accords, which have got nowhere near enough attention, not near the attention they deserve. And... And the people who negotiated that should have won a Nobel Peace Prize. My bad, Chechnya. Thank you. Sorry. Chechnya.
I mispronounced it. I mispronunciated it. Because that brings the possibility of peace to the Middle East. And that, consider, was a big, that was a big accomplishment wait, wait. contribution. He also established the Abrahamic Accords, which have got nowhere near enough attention, not near the attention they deserve. And, and the people who negotiated that should have won a Nobel Peace Prize, because that brings the possibility of peace to the Middle East. You remember the, you know, you know, remember the, in like the whole Iran nuclear deal um, that he wanted to rip up and then did rip up because he called Iran filthy terrorists, you know, whatever, I guess. Um, oh yeah. And tried to ban them from coming into the country because he said that they were Muslim. Do you consider big, that was a big accomplishment. Both of those things. Do you consider the, the giant increase in drone strikes under Trump problematic? What do you mean problematic? Do you mean desirable? Do, do you because you said, oh, he didn't get us in a new war, but I would consider all those bombings, which are illegal, by the way, an act of war. Do you think I didn't that say those that are... Trump? I didn't say that Trump's record was unblemished mm. or that there weren't skirmishes of various sorts. I'm not trying to paint him. Uh, I'm not trying to paint him beige and or I'm not trying to whitewash him. I'm perfectly aware of Trump's flaws and his advantages. But he didn't embroil the U.S. in a war. And you guys have been embroiled in a pointless war. This for, meme is for very what? real. How long now? Since the 1960s? One after uh, another. And then the yeah, Abraham Accords are a big dog. What do we? An act of so listen. We did several acts of war that were completely unnecessary under Trump, but thankfully none of the other countries that we did that to decided that they wanted to fight us. So basically, Trump is he's just better than like Biden and like giving money to a country that's being like genocided and like that's like bad, dude. I am very smart. Yeah, we did a couple of genocides too. Yeah, look, don't worry, don't, don't, don't worry about that, dude. War is when de so true. War is when Democrat. War is when Democrat. Yeah, yeah. It's just like I don't like I, just like the the simplest thing that you could bring up would be like Yemen. We're helping fund uh, like a, a blockade, killing millions in Yemen with Saudi Arabia. Is that not a war? Is that not a war? His, his increased, yeah, Israel, Israel and Palestine. Yeah, that one, that's literally a war. North Korea and South Korea are literally at war still. We were engaged in quite a few wars. And not only did he increase drone strikes as well, but he, I, 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 I don't know. It's just like, you can't, I don't know. This is just, yeah, the family separation policy, forced hysterectomies at the border in literally insane shit insane shit whatever i guess big deal and so and did he betray the working class well i think that's in some sense a vague it's a vague question hillary definitely betrayed the working class because she decided to go with the woke mob instead of her typical in typical in, instead of the typical base of power oh. that the democrats had always relied on so what i've never actually heard like jordan peterson speak at length about like his idea of politics but holy shit he falls apart holy shit he falls apart oh man woke hillary clinton is the woke mob hello hillary clinton is your average wine mom can i give you an example decision yeah i love how it's a vague question when it comes to trump but it's not a vague question with hillary it's not even like you it's like a, a muddy answer you said it's a vague question now can i give sure. you an example on trump betraying the working class because there's a few things you could point to first of all there was uh, net outsourcing of jobs under his administration when he campaigned as the opposite the second thing is his number one legislative accomplishment was a 2017 tax cut where 83 percent of the benefits went to the went top one percent so those are two examples of you know he campaigned as the anti-outsourcing guy then there was net outsourcing under his administration and in fact that same type one in chat if you think that he knew that or if you think jordan knew that already type two in chat if you don't tax bill incentivized outsourcing and then again that tax bill mostly benefited the wealthy and it didn't help the working class so that's what i mean by betraying the working class i think he campaigned in a very populist way but in terms of how he governed it was very sort of standard establishment republican just like george w bush for example yeah well i don't have any real comments on that like i said i'm not trying to whitewash the trump administration i'm just pointing to a couple no of comments that he did that mm. he hasn't got credit for yep no no comment nope i have no, I, no 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 clue no comment what yeah, you should have got credit for. I actually enjoyed you were on the PBD podcast, I think it was recently, and you made a comment that you found Trump whiny, particularly over the, you know, common refrain that he can't stop saying he thinks the election was stolen. And you know, well, I me think if I'm wrong, but your commentary well, was like, move on. Well, I think I think it's a strategic error on his part, at minimum. I mean, Trump portrays himself and thinks of himself that is true. It is an error as a winner. 
And part of his attractiveness on the populist front was his unabashed, victorious persona, let's say. Listen, I don't, I don't think that's the only thing that they find attractive about Trump. <laughs> Stayed it up in there in the mucky swamp. Diane always has them in the <laughs> <laughs> mucky swamp. Yeah. <laughs> but it's amazing. And he's the guy that gets things done, and he's the guy that wins. But apparently, the election was stolen from him. And so that begs the question, are you the winner and the guy that gets things done, or are you the guy that lets things be stolen from you? <laughs> and the answer that Trump had always had was, well, I'm not the guy. I'm not that guy. I don't know who else I am, but I'm definitely the winner here. I'm out. <laughs> and I think that now campaigning as if he was the um, victim, let's say, of a plot isn't going to do him any good. I think it was probably a fatal decision from a strategic perspective because mm. it's so off-brand. And that has nothing. That's completely independent of whatever virtue the argument about the stolen election. So here's the thing. This is wrong um, in, in the sense of like his analysis of he's right that it's wrong for Trump to do this. And I'm not even talking about it in like a left. He said like obviously it wasn't stolen from him, but like a strategic stance. He's wrong on why it's like off brand. This isn't off brand for Trump like whatsoever. It's not. Absolutely not. He was he primed his he primed his audience from day one where he lied and said that his like crowds were bigger than uh, uh, uh obama's and everything and that how the media is like lying about him and stuff like that and how they're like conspiring against him things along those lines even like before he was even in office one of his first like biggest lies that they're conspiring against me they're trying to take me down was saying that the obama administration was um spying on his uh campaign and like wiretapping him and all this and like this that and the third right do do we a lot of people don't even remember this but yeah like trump's big thing even before he was in office was claiming that the obama administration wiretapped him and his like coordinate him and his like uh, communications with people and were spying on him and was like feeding that information to like people People. that was his thing right this is something that's always been down now the reason for why this is bad for trump is because his base is ready to move on they're, they're just ready to move on they're they're tired of it they're they're done hearing about it they want to hear about what we're going to do in the future not about the past and so he's just stuck on the past and he's just like a record playing on repeat and it's not good for like the base it doesn't fire them up anymore or anything everybody's just kind of moved on from it even the ones who think the election was stolen they've just kind of moved on from it nobody honestly honestly nobody really cares anymore besides him might have well i don't believe that the that the judiciary in the united states is so corrupt that the, the possibility of a valid finding on the election fr fraud front has been reduced to zero i don't find that credible and then i do think so i also think that that's it's a mistake on that front and it's a mistake for conservatives it's a real mistake for conservatives to take that route because conservatives can't say all the institutions are corrupt and untrustworthy. That's what the radical leftists say. And populist conservatives tend to do that, and that really leaves them with nothing. Uh, I, mean, I mean, like, it's true, though. Except maybe an appeal to public whim, and that's no way to govern. So I think that was a mistake, too. Mm. Uh, you know, you, in your commentary, I do often hear a strong defense um, of our institutions. And I do feel like one of the common things that defines the current political era is definitely populism that bubbles up on the left uh, through the vessel of, say, a Bernie Sanders, and even what I would argue was a fake populism that came up on the right with Donald Trump, where the agreement does seem to be, well, hold on, these institutions are really not working for us, and they're broken, and they're fundamentally corrupt. And, you know, the genesis of it being you have this donor class of corporations and billionaires that donates to politicians, and then they get elected and do the bidding of that donor class and the, and the corporations. Um, mm -hmm. Do you disagree with that analysis? Do you think that that's just overstating well, the problem and the institutions well, are actually I, healthy? Or? Well, uh, I think it's partly a Tower of Babel problem. So I've been listening a fair bit to Russell Brand, who I quite like. Mm. Russell is very, very smart. He's definitely one of the smartest people I've ever met. He's They call him... Is that like his cute little like nickname? They call him Brussel? Wait, is that true? People call him Brussel? Hey, Brussel. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Brussel. He has two kids. He has two kids. That shit's insanity. Elon Musk and Trump occupy the same space. They are both monarchs of Twitter. In a way, when Trump was dethroned as Twitter king, he I hate the way this man speaks. I hate the way this man speaks. Also, it looks like it smells crazy in that room. 
Like Look, it, it's it, me, Russell Brand. You found. Is it just me? Am I ra am I being racist? But it looks like it looked like it smelled. Like are we being cut off from important aspects of reality? To are we being cut off from important aspects of reality? Uh, I don't know, man. It looked like it smelled crazy in there. Anyways, he's sharp, and he differs in his political utterances from me to a substantial degree. Although there's a fair bit of commonality as well. He's more. He's beating the anti-capitalism drum in a manner that I tend not to. But there's a specific reason for that. And the reason is that Russell has realized that size is a problem. And you know, the, the lefties tend to be skeptical of big... For me, size is not a problem. <laughs> government this meme and is the very right-wingers tend to be... Sorry, the lefties tend to be skeptical of big, big companies right. and the right-wingers tend to be skeptical of big government. Right. And I think the right way forward through all that mess is that we should be skeptical of big. All right, guys. What you <laughs> very real. That's, that's, his, uh, that's his big brain play that he's going to be leaving us with. The, the left, they're scared of big, of big corporation. They're right. They're scared of big government. Me, I'm scared of big. Big. When things get big, things get bad. Big equals bad. <laughs> I'm very smart. <laughs> it's just come on, man. Just just think a little bit harder. Simply because the government is big does not mean that it's bad. Depending on what the government is doing, a big government could be very good. If the if the government if a big government means it's always taking care of every road and there's never a pothole that's on the street, uh, and any like on every single road of america for like more than a week and we're making sure that everybody has health care and we're making sure that all like homeless people are taken care of as quickly as possible and we're making sure that people's food is good and we're making sure that companies aren't like putting through crazy amounts of uh pollutants into the air and the water and the ground like that'd be a great thing that'd be a big government thing to do but that's a good thing bad big government gets bad when it starts to spend time not doing things like protecting people from things that could come up in their life uh, and things through like the process of mostly capitalism. And when it starts to worm its way into like the bedroom and the bathroom and the, um, the, the doctor's office as well, like places where typically it doesn't even really belong. That's true. Big Booba is pretty good. So true. I do. I do love Big Booba. That's pretty pog. That's pretty sick. So that's like the problem. I don't know. It's just ridiculous. This this guy needs to like he, need, he needs to like fix himself. OK, he needs to he needs to seek help because whatever he's doing right now is not good for him. Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. If you're enjoying the content, hit the subscribe button. If you don't, it'll make Boo very sad. I know a bunch of you who are watching are not subscribed. Join the frenzy. You won't regret it. <laughs> Thank you, boo.